Hello everyone and welcome to the Biblical Bookworm. My name is Elizabeth and today I'll be talking about the book Letter to the Friends of the Cross by St. Louis de Montfort. The book was published in 1845 and it's actually not really a book, it's rather a letter because it's only 14 pages long but it's unbelievably dense in information. First, St. Louis explains what Christian holiness consists of and he says that Christian holiness is summarized in one sentence in Matthew 16, 24, where Jesus says, if anyone wants to uh, be a follower of mine, he should renounce himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. So Christian perfection, according to St. Louis, consists of four ingredients. First, we have to resolve to become saints, which is contained in the part of the sentence, if anyone wants to follow me, if anyone wants to become a follower of mine. So first, we actually have to have the will, the, the, the desire to become a saint. Second, let him renounce himself means that we need, need self-denial. Proud people are excluded from becoming saints. Third, let him pick up his cross, which equals suffering. So without suffering, we cannot attain Christian holiness. And fourth, let him follow me, meaning that we have to take action. And St. Louis analyzes that in a very detailed way. First, he says that um, the part where Jesus says, if anyone wants to follow me, indicates that there is only a very small number of people who actually will do that, who actually will want to follow him, if anyone, if there is anyone who wants to do that. And St. Louis also explains that it has been revealed to several saints that there will be only about one in 10,000 people who will actually resolve to become a saint and do what Jesus calls him to do. Second, we have the part where Jesus says, let him renounce himself, which shows us that humility is a necessary part in order to become a saint. You cannot enter heaven without being humble. Third, let him pick up his cross. And here I found St. Louis' explanation extremely beautiful because he explains how it is important that we pick up our cross, not a cross that we desire ourselves, not some suffering that we think that is the best for us, but the cross that Jesus has made for us. And I would like to read a paragraph where he explains that, where he basically, that is basically Jesus talking in the first person. And I believe that that paragraph really shows us what our cross is. And I think it just describes it in a very beautiful way. His own cross, which I, in my wisdom, designed for him in every detail of number, measure, and weight. His own cross, which I have fashioned with my own hands and with great exactness as regards its four dimensions of length, breadth, thickness, and depth. His own cross, which out of love for him I have carved from a piece of the one I bore to Calvary. His own cross, which is the greatest gift I can bestow upon my chosen ones on earth. His own cross, whose thickness is made up of the loss of one's possessions, humiliations, contempt, sufferings, illness, and spiritual trials, which come to him daily till his death in accordance with my providence. His own cross, whose length consists of certain period of days or months enduring slander, or lying on a sickbed, or being forced to beg, or suffering from temptations, dryness, desolation, and other interior trials. His own cross, whose breadth is made up of the most harsh and bitter circumstances brought by by relatives, friends, servants, his own cross, whose depth is made up of the hidden trials I shall inflict on him without his being able to find any comfort from other people. For they also, under my guidance, will turn away from him and join me with making him suffer. So that really gives us some examples of what our cross is going to be like and what that cross can consist of. And I found it really beautiful that in that paragraph, we realize that the cross that we are going to, that is going to be ours, that we are going to carry, is actually part of the cross that Jesus bore to Calvary and that he manufactured that with his own hands. And I just, I found that extremely beautiful. After that, St. Louis talks about the fourth ingredient necessary for Christian holiness, which is let him follow me. And here, St. Louis gives us 14 rules for followers of Christ, for friends of the cross, which are the following. First, we should not deliberately cause crosses by our own fault, meaning that we should not try to achieve something good by doing something bad. 
For example, that would be that we are negligent at work, we do something badly, and are humiliated afterwards. So that would not be the right way to approach that. The second rule is that we should be aware of our neighbor's good, meaning that if we do something that is morally neutral, so it's neither sin nor is it um, beneficial in any way, and our neighbor is irritated by that, we should stop doing it. The third rule is that we should admire the sublime virtue of the saints without pretending to attain it. The fourth rule is that we should ask God for the wisdom of the cross, and St. Louis reminds us that this wisdom is primarily gained through frequent prayer, humiliations, and labor. We should humble ourselves in our own faults without worrying. St. Louis says that God allows even his greater, greatest saints to fall into some great sin occasionally in order to prevent them from taking pride in the graces that God gave them. Then we have to remember that God uses humiliations in order to purify us. The next rule would be to avoid the trap of taking pride in our cross. St. Louis says that it's a sign of pride if we think that our cross is extraordinarily heavy or that it's a sign of God's love for us. He has three rules in order to avoid that trap. The first is that we should keep in mind that our pride makes us see our cross heavier than it, than it actually is. Our pride make, makes us see splinters as planks. The second rule is to rather view crosses as a loving punishment from God for our sins rather than a sign of his love for us. And the third rule is to always remember that no matter what our cross is, no matter what our humiliations are, they are way lighter than the punishment we deserve for our sins. We should profit rather by small crosses than by big ones. As St. Louis says, what counts more for God is how we suffer rather than what we suffer. It's more important that we suffer with love and out of love than uh, the fact that our sufferings are actually heavy. The next rule is that we should love the cross not with an emotional love, but with a rational and supernatural love. St. Louis says that it's impossible for human beings to love to suffer in an emotional way. But what we can do is to love to suffer in a rational way as we understand why we are suffering and why that is important and beneficial for us. And the last four rules are that we should suffer all sorts of crosses without exception and without choice, that we should never complain against creatures, that we should accept the cross only with gratitude, and that we should take up some voluntary crosses. Now let's get to my opinion on the book. I would give the book 10 out of 10 stars because, as I've mentioned at the beginning of the video, the, the letter to the Friends of the Cross is unbelievably dense in new information and I have learned things that I haven't read anywhere else. So I highly recommend it to every one of you, maybe even read it this Lent. And that's been it for today. I hope you liked the video and see you next week. God bless and bye!